Jazakallah, like uh, some of the brothers are saying, I'm here myself to listen to all of our learned brothers and scholars who are here, Alhamdulillah, our guests. Uh, I, was, I would like to say just a couple of words. I was, while I was coming here with my son, uh, who is writing uh, his paper about, uh, research paper here about effect of colonization on the Middle East. So I think, uh, uh, like some of the brothers were saying, and I think uh, uh, I asked uh, my son to quickly uh, find out that uh, I didn't even know, I'm a professor here in the college. I said, you know, can you please tell me who is the chief of army staff of USA? I would ask any one of you, Alhamdulillah, I think all of these uh, nice young brothers here, anybody knows? The president. This does not happen uh, uh, in any of the other Muslim countries. General okay, Milley. anybody knows who is the chief of staff in uh, America, of America? General Milley. Huh? General Milley. Subhanallah. Very good. One brother. Yes, yes, that's what I said. Very right. General Milley. None of us knows here, living here in America, whether we are professor, the professor PhD in political science, huh? we don't know. And, but, uh, whether it is uh, Egypt or Pakistan or wherever, or Algeria or Morocco, people know who the general is before even they know who the president is. But I wanted to, I was telling my son, you know what, uh, you want to know about President Morsi? You know who, what he was for us, living here in America? We always say, the example of Muhammad Ali. People give the example of Muhammad Ali. Why they know the most famous American Muslim, other than a couple of others, uh, Malcolm X or others, is Muhammad Ali. Why? Because he stood up for some principle. And why people talk about Nelson Mandela? Because he stood up for principle. So I said, son, you want to know who President Morsi was? He's our example of Muslims of this land for somebody who stands up for principle. May Allah reward all of you for coming and I am here to listen and to those who try to prevent his funeral in Egypt, I want to say, look, I might not have had this opportunity in Egypt, but I had, thanks to the brothers in Boca Raton and the Islamic Center, hundreds of us prayed right here in Boca Raton in South Florida his funeral and we were blessed and so did millions of Muslims all over the country and all over the world. Jazakallah, thank you so much for conducting all of this. May Allah bless all of you, people in this masjid and people of this land. Today I received a message while I was coming here from Orlando. Brother Mirsad was saying, this should not be the only event. There should have been events taking place all over every masjid in this, in this country. Why not? And to tell you that I sent this message, uh, your message, Alhamdulillah, and I received a call from Orlando. One of the Islamic Center was saying, we want to do, conduct exactly the same event. Can we have more information? May Allah bless and reward all. Yes, this is Allah. This is uh, why I wanted Brother Asim to say something, because he is one of those real workers. Uh, for as long as I live here, since 97, this brother is always there to support any goodness. Alhamdulillah, I am glad that this is taking effort. Our lectures, Muslim of the World Lecture Series, will continue, and this is also an effort for us on the national scale to reclaim the spaces. And I'm glad that brothers in Orlando picked up on it. Uh, so now let's have our brother Ahmed take over, and our guests, please, you can have seats. We provided nice, comfortable chairs for you. And then we'll have a, a, a doctor. Uh, um, obviously, we're going to delay the Isha. Uh, uh, the Imam is not here. Anybody who, brother Marwan, what should we do? Delay. Yes, we will delay Isha until we finish the program. Sure. Sure.
to celebrate the legacy and life of Dr. Mohammed Morsi and the history of Egypt, a brief history of uh, Egypt today. Uh, SubhanAllah, uh, the recent history of Egypt started with uh, attempt of uh, French uh, invasion of Egypt back in 1798. And it was ended because of the popular resistance of the colonists, uh, French colonists, uh, by 1801. It took three years. But the people who resisted and changed the reality of Egypt, it wasn't the Egyptian military. As a matter of fact, it was uh, the Egyptian people and the people uprising against French occupation. In, uh, in 1807, in between 1801 to 1807, there was an attempt from the British again to uh, come in and invade Egypt and what happened was basically again popular, popular resistance they defeated uh, the British uh, in a very bad uh, they received a very bad defeat uh, in 1805 1807 uh, the again popular uprising brought in Muhammad Ali to be the head of Egypt and the person who became in charge of Egypt. And since that day, military became the main power and the ruling class of Egypt from 1807 up till today. Uh, throughout the history, there was a Another uprising uh, that was led by Arabi, but it was uh, a military uprising, and uh, the ruling uh, family at the time uh, seeked help from the British, and in 1982 ended the uprising of Arabi, which took uh, three years from 79 to 82, and the uh, British colonies for Egypt. Uh, became a reality as of 1982 and continued up to 1954. Um, that's a very brief history about the new Egypt, about the new era of Egypt uh, and its relation with military and military power and ruling class, uh, which kind of really uh, devastated. Uh, now let me give a very brief personal history with Dr. Muhammad Musa. I had the privilege of knowing Dr. Morsi uh, for 38 years. Uh, my first interaction with him uh, when he was just graduating, uh, getting his PhD from USC, uh, 1982. And uh, subhanAllah, uh, we study in our Sira books about the story of Al Hassan and Al Hussein when they were trying to teach somebody how to make wudu. They basically uh, asked him, uh, Can you please be a judge and see which one of us is better to make wudu? Dr. Muhammad Mursi ended up being in my study group. <coughs> study group and uh, in every single day he was actually teaching me how to be a better person. He never came to the group without being prepared, very well prepared. Uh, the topic will be a five to ten minutes topic to be covered. Uh, Dr. Morsi will be coming with 40 pages of research in the talk, summarized in 5 to 10 minutes, but basically he put all of us 
to share because hey, it's just an Islamic study group. Let us give it five minutes of preparation and study, and it will be okay. Through his attitude and determination, he taught every one of us how to be responsible. Even though he wasn't in charge of the group. Uh, every one of us have kind of memorized Quran, but not really in depth. When we, when we were young, back home in Egypt and our villages, so was that Muhammad. But he made a commitment in 1982 to really finish memorizing the whole Quran. And he did it in a form of perfection, both him and his wife, in three years. He made that promise that he will not leave the United States before he finished memorizing the Quran, and he did memorize the whole Quran within three years. That is the kind of strength and determination that Dr. Mursi had. When I received the message of uh, Dr. Morsi uh, 